<sighs> How's it going, everybody? Uh, so usually we have skits on this channel on Thursdays, but um, yeah, we did not have the lav mic on and the audio sounds horrendous. If you don't believe me, check out this clip from the uh, upcoming skit. Being a protein shake, I highly recommend it. Just Doritos, Mountain Dew, let's get it. Who was that a doozy? I think it was a doozy. But yeah, we're gonna refilm it. It's gonna be next week on Thursday. Uh, how to train like an elite gamer. Very excited for it. But you know, I just wanted to give you something and there was something I wanted to talk about anyway, maybe from a podcast standpoint, but you know, uh, I'll just say it here. So it has been in the news lately about all these toxic gamers coming out. I don't know why I did the air quotes because you know, they are toxic. We were seeing Gamergate all over again, and uh, it started with the sexual harassment charges in the gaming industry, both in the upper, you know, the, you know, leaders in the gaming industry, as well as people in the community of treating people wrong in conventions, gaming conventions. And now we're hearing about Laura Bailey, who's a voice actress for Life is Strange. Uh, <laughs> Life is Strange. Oops. Last of Us Part 2, and she's getting these death threats for her character doing wrong things within the game. And she's getting really horrendous death threats, and even Neil Druckmann, and he's getting all this backlash for what he did for Last of Us Part 2. Now, I will agree with you, I didn't play it, I did spoil it for myself, but I... <laughs> I will agree that there are sections of the game that kind of disrespect the plot of the first game, but that's not what this video is about. It's not about my opinion whether the game did right or wrong. It's about how the community is reacting to these things. Are we having this kind of feeling that the gaming community is becoming way too toxic for its liking. Take for example, again, Laura Bailey. She's just playing a character in a game and she's getting backlash from people in the community and even the sexual harassment charges. Why are these things happening? Why are we at this point as a community where we're, we're just, you know, spreading toxic behavior. And what's funny to me about all of this is that, well, I guess I shouldn't say funny, but what's interesting about it is that, you know, we're in this community that has been a part of bullying before. You know, take back even five, 10 years ago, the nerd culture as we know it today wasn't mainstream. It wasn't the cool thing. And we were hated. We were bullied. We were like, you know, shoved down to say like, you shouldn't like that stuff. The older you get, the more you should distance yourself from our nerd culture, from video games, from comic books, from, uh, you know, anything that has to do with nerd culture. So we were bullied before and now we're doing kind of the same thing to people within our own community. How does that work? And I don't mean to sound like, oh, I'm getting super philosophical. <laughs> what? Uh, I don't mean to sound like I'm some kind of psychiatrist or anything else, but it, it, it really goes to show how we treat others, even though we got treated the same way. And I think it really goes into kind of like generational sin. And, you know, we can get into a religious standpoint. I, I am myself a Christian, but what I am more talking about is the generational kind of abuse that goes on. You know, look at some families, right? Uh, we see abusive fathers, abusive parents, but how were they treated as children? They were treated horribly. My father, the father before him, the father before him, they were all treated this way. And now they're gonna treat the next generation that way because that's how they were treated. So that's just how life is. And I feel like that's what's happening in nerd culture. We were treated like garbage. We were treated with you know, bullying. And now we're doing the same thing to the next generation of gamers or even to the current generation of gamers. Why are we gonna continue that cycle when we can be the ones that breaks the cycle? When we go to these gaming conventions, why are we trying to ask people like, are you actually a gamer when we can just welcome people in? Why are we hearing all these stories in gaming conventions where we're not treating women like people, but objects to obtain? But if we don't try to 
break this cycle. That's why the mainstream will always continue to see the gaming community as toxic. And now kind of jumping into opinions about games here. It's not just with Laura Bailey, even though it's a serious issue, it's not just with the sexual harassment charges going on in the gaming community, which also serious thing that we need to take very seriously, but something a little less serious is opinions about games. Going back to The Last of Us Part Two, there are positive people and negative people, and whether or not you're on the one side or the other, each side hates each other for some reason. If you think the game is a positive experience, you loved what you played, Oh man, are you backlashed? You are like the worst critic ever. You don't know video games, blah. But then if you are on the negative side, you didn't think Last of Us Part Two was any good game. Oh, you're homophobic, you're transphobic. Oh, you you don't know what video games are. You're like, you don't wanna know art. You don't wanna experience anything beyond yourself. And it's all these finger pointings when both sides need to realize you can like what you like, you can not like what you don't like. I, I think we need to come to terms that people like what they like and then what they don't like, they don't like. I myself am not a huge fan of Assassin's Creed Odyssey. And that's just my prerogative. Did I use that word right? I hope I did, but that's just what I don't like. I don't like Assassin's Creed Odyssey. I joke on the podcast all the time that it's just hot trash. I hate it. Anything that you play it, blah, blah, blah. That's more of my character on the podcast. But if you come up to me in real life and say, I like Assassin's Creed Odyssey. Cool. Do you, man? I'm more of Assassin's Creed Origins myself. I didn't like Syndicate. I don't like Odyssey. I just didn't like that studio with Assassin's Creed. But that's just me. If you like Assassin's Creed Odyssey, if you connected with it, Great, and I'm not trying to say I'm the bigger man here. I am not because I have, you know, slipped up and I have said like, how can you like that game? Or how can you not like that game? We all make those mistakes, but it's trying to break that cycle continuously. But the reason I say all this is that I have hope for the gaming community. I have hope that mainstream media will take us seriously and legitimize us. But first and foremost, we need to fix ourselves. We need to fix our community. We need to make sure that the mainstream media knows that when you enter into the gaming community, you will be loved, cherished, and we have people who will do that. But it's just just negated by all these toxic people that send death threats to a voice actress. Why? <laughs> like, really, why? And like I said, the reason why is because of generational sin. We were picked on, we were bullied, so in return, we will bully ourselves. Going back to the parents situation, if we don't do that, each generation will grow up to think that abusive parents are the thing to do. If we continue to do this as a gaming community being toxic, then people will think that if you enter in the gaming community, you will be toxic. That's why not a lot of people are Eagles fans, like your boy, because Philadelphia Eagles fans, uh, <laughs> they can be a little toxic. Uh-oh, <laughs> but I'm, I'm still an Eagles fan, but I know a lot of people from Philadelphia who don't even touch the Eagles because of the community. Same thing with gaming community. How will we let people enjoy video games when the community is just so toxic? So let's do our part. Let's try to break this cycle. And you know, we can disagree about games. We can disagree and say that, oh, well, this game I didn't like for reasons A, B, and C. If you thought the game was positive, just listen to that person. But if you're on the negative side, you know, make your points clear and concise. If you're on the positive side, you know, just don't point fingers and say like, oh, well, you didn't understand it. It's just like people don't like what they don't like. Same thing on a negative side. If you're negative, people like what they like. Who cares? I don't care if you like Assassin's Creed Odyssey. Maybe I do a little bit, uh, you know, play Assassin's Creed Origins and then come back to me. But <laughs> I think that's all I have to say on it. Uh, this is just a rambly video. Again, skits are coming out every Thursday. It's just that this one, <laughs> the audio was just hot trash. But uh, thank you for watching this video. If you haven't yet, definitely subscribe to the channel so that you know when all the sketches come out. And if you enjoyed this kind of video, 
I can make more of these if you would like. Just let me know in the comments down below. Give it a like and a share so that I know that you enjoy these videos. Uh, maybe even instead. I don't know. I don't know what you like. But subscribe to the channel. Hit that notification bell so that you know when all the podcasts come out. When all the sketch videos come out. Maybe even these videos. I don't know. But, you know, thank you for watching this. I appreciate you very much. You are loved on this channel. Stay safe out there, everybody. And um, wear your mask.